Uncensored brought to you by PointsBet. Check out PointsBet's great odds and offers. Download that PointsBet app today and gamble responsibly. Well, guys, today's guest, well, he's regarded as one of the best front rowers to ever play the game. He had a great combination of aggression and skill and played in an era where only the tough survived. Let me tell you, that's never a true line spoken. He's one of the Tigers' most beloved sons. Steve Blocker Roach, welcome to Uncensored. I thought you were talking about Arthur Beaton. <laughs> no, thanks, uh, thanks, Brett. It's great to be here. Great to be back at Leichhardt mm. Oval, the eighth wonder of the world. How good is it? It's, it's fantastic, isn't it? And it's a shame there's not more games here. But geez, you must have had some wonderful memories playing at this ground. I had some great memories playing here. You see those trees over there, yeah. Brett? When I came, they were they were only just planted. So have a look at them now. That wow. tells you how old I am. But um. You know, running out on a Sunday afternoon and looking over at that hill there and seeing a sea of black and gold. Mm. It was unreal. Last bloke I used to see as I run out would be Laurie Nichols. <laughs> yeah. Laurie would be cheering and carrying on. And mate, it was always, oh, mate, the world's best fan. Yeah. There's, there's no doubt about that. He was. Uh, Does he come to training and things like that? Oh, mate, every day yeah. in his singlet, he'd be sitting there. And if anyone abused any of the players, he'd knuckle up too. Yeah, that's good. Hey? At a pizza place up in, uh, up in Roselle one night, some bloke was bagging. Um, was bagging Kerry Hensley. and uh, <laughs> really give it to him. He, he chinned him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. That's the type of support. That's the type of supporter I needed when I was playing. He would have got in some fights if he supported me. Is there one favourite memory that stands out, or one moment, or a game that stands out from here? I think the the big one that stands out for me was um, we played um, we played Penrith here one day. There was twenty three thousand here. It's a capacity of eighteen thousand, and those houses over there, people were sitting on the roofs, and uh, whoever won. Um, made, I think it was fifth position and Penrith made fourth position. Mm. Then we played and made it was a war. Yeah. Um, John Cartwright got sent off. Yeah. Um, Mark Guy was going off his melon. We had a great <laughs> package, you know. We yeah. had five or six internationals in our pack. Um, we, ended up, we ended up winning it at the end of the day. They had one sent off. But then we had to play them again on the yeah. Wednesday. So we played them on the Sunday and then backed up again. Oh, mate, mm. it, was, it, was, uh, it was a war. Uh, but, mate, great, great memories. I, mate, just even... Just even coming here and playing, and the first time I ever saw this joint, mate, I fell straight in love mm. with it. You know, it's a, a real footy oval, and I can't believe when I hear the league talking about doing up all these grounds now, and they talk okay. about Cogger and Brookvale and all that. Good, I hope they do get their their ground done up. But mate, this place is something magic. I've talked to blokes that have played here only once. Mm. I remember talking to Willie Mason one day, and Willie said to me, "Now, now I know what you yeah. all talk about. This is, mate, this is unbelievable because you could reach out, you could you could virtually reach out and touch mm. the players." Well, I think when you look at, and I guess it depends who you support, but someone like me, I'm neutral in terms of, you know, Brookvale and Cogra and those sort of grounds because, I, you know, I haven't played for any of them, but this was the ground, yeah. you know, you wanted to play it when it was packed. Now, it's Wayne Pierce Hill. Now, you know, have you got a laneway or a street out the back here or something? No, I think the, the bathroom down the bottom <laughs> is there, probably not. Or the can- bar. bar. You got the bar? Or the canteen <laughs> or something like that. But, uh, yeah, they named the stand yeah. over there at the southern end after the great Keith Barnes. Yep. What a... Mate, what a what a what a great man! Yeah. Um, you know, a real father figure yeah. to all of us guys. Yep. Um, if you have a look back at back in the day, you know, a lot of us could have went to other clubs and all that. But um, Keith Barnes was the one that kept us there. Um, he, he used to say to me, if I got in a bit of bother or a bit of trouble, he go, "You'd be the death of me." Like that, you know? <laughs> anyway, um, this day I'd retired. I still had a, a year to go on my contract, yeah. and I. I'd done this uh, right knee, had a total reconstruction. Was that 92, 93? Yeah, no, it was about 80, 86, mm-hmm. 85. Yeah. And, then I, uh, and then I hurt this one and yeah. I tore me. And my, my, my great mate, Les Hobbs, mm. who, who was our, our conditioner, our trainer, and, mate, a great mate too, he tapped me on the shoulder and said, mate, I think, you know, you've got, got a family net now. I think you'd want to be able to walk around when you're a bit older. And, mm. and uh, if anyone else would have said it to me, Brett, honestly, I would have, I would have, uh, I would have went off my head, but... <laughs> it made me think if it, you know if one of your best mates is saying, yeah. Yeah, mate, I think it's time." And, and mate, I ended up uh, I ended up retiring anyway. Keith Barnes, like, thank goodness for that, you're gone. You know. <laughs> anyway, a week later they signed Mark Guy, so I rang, <laughs> I, so I rang him and said, "You got one, get, got rid of one you little tick, now you got another one." Well, I think at that stage he had you covered. <laughs> um, now, obviously, you want, you're a Balmain boy through and through, but you, 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 they signed you from West Illawarra. Did you grow up down there in Wollongong? Yeah, I did. But I you were born in Sydney, weren't you? No, no, I wasn't actually. Yeah, the- a lot of people say that when they look at uh, like that Wikipedia uh, and all that. No, I was born. Well, in I, think, I think I was born in Wollongong. <laughs> I was born in Wollongong Hospital, and yeah. mate, we had a we had a great tradition down there in, in Wollongong. I, I think we've had like ten internationals. When I was growing up as a kid, you know, like, you know, we all 
we all looked at Bob Fulton and Graham yep. Langlands who were Wollongong yep. blokes and mate, they were like superheroes yeah. to us. And I remember, I remember Graham Langlands wearing the Adidas boots. My mum taking me down to Kmart and we'd get the, the shitty little boots with the four stripes on it and she'd yeah. pick the stripes off. So it had so three. We, so we'd look like, you know. Had three so Adidas. We, so we'd look like Graham Langlands, you know. The only thing that I never looked like him, I wish I could play <laughs> like him, what a... What a legend! But then, you know, and also Bobby Fulton down there, mate. Those mm. guys, those guys were superstars, and uh, mate, they, they picked the team of the century uh, in, in Wollongong in the Illawarra, and the back line was as good as anyone yeah. you've ever seen. You know, Dula Wells and Barnes yeah. and Langlands, and mm. you know, well, it was similar. I, I remember before the Knights come in, and I guess that's before the Steelers come in. You could play for it. Australia from the Newcastle competition. You could yeah. pick for rep teams from the Newcastle competition, and when you look at you know, two strong areas, especially uh, two steel cities, yeah. Illawarra, uh, Wollongong and, and Newcastle area. There's, there's been some terrific players coming out of both both areas. Yeah, you're right. It was uh, They're similar sort of areas, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, very similar. They'd always got on great with all the Newcastle yeah. blokes, but I didn't really much like travelling up in the bus no. to play against them. You know, I, I knew I didn't sleep real good the <laughs> night before because you knew, mate, that's yeah. how they played the game and we... we we played the game a bit like yeah. that, you know. So well, yeah, well, it was that, good. They were good contests. That, that's all. I'll get to you're that. the ball boy. Right? I was the ball boy. Yeah. I tell you one bloke I wouldn't have talked smack to. That was you. There was plenty of other wingers <laughs> I used to give it to. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. But let's go back when you were a kid and uh, your hero. You know, brought to you by Swish. Now Swish is the most exciting personalized fan experience there is, and it's all from the convenience of your own phone. Check it out, Swish. Uh, now, Blocker, who was your hero as a kid growing up? Oh, there was only one bloke for me, mate. The great Arthur Beats. Who was? Oh, yeah. Mate, we, we used to play knee footy in the hallway mm. in the bloody housing commission mm. home. Two bedrooms with three, you know, two brothers and the three of us in one room. And at half time, remember they used to have the ABC match of the day yeah. and you know, we'd be crawling around at half time. But I'd never, I, you know, I remember getting up early. The old man would wake me up early when Australia were playing England mm. back in the day and you know, it'd be three in the morning and they'd be playing over there in England and just, uh, you know, just watching Arthur. And he, Arthur, I, I, I'm a bit of a footy perv. I'm a bit yeah. like you, mate. I'd... I went back through all the old archives at Channel Seven and yeah. and got um, you know tapes of Arthur and that and made it wonderfully skilled player. But he went to Hull KR. I yep. reckon that's where he started to learn his skill. Uh, there's a great story about when he played here at Balmain. Um, well, he got he got suspended in the uh, in, when they won in '69. He got suspended in the semi final against South Sydney. They they butted him up and pulled him into a stink, and he got <laughs> suspended. So he, Arthur didn't play in the grand final, and. Um, just just watching him play and just the way that he played the game. Mm. But he was what you were talking about before, mate. There was, like, he was super tough and he'd take anyone on, but mm. he was super skillful. Mm. I remember, um, I, you know, I, I was good mates with Lurch O'Neill, God rest his soul. We used to go down to Lake and Joel with Les, I was just yep. mentioning, and, and see Lurch, mate. Oh, mate one of the great gentlemen. And, and I used to say to him, mate, what was it like playing against Arthur? And he said, he said mate, you know what? He said, oh, We'd kick down field and I'd, I'd line myself opposite yeah. him and I'd say, well, I want to bash this bloke because that's the way he was. Yeah. He said he'd scoot around the blind side and, you know, run around the blind side or he'd go two-pass runner and run. He said, mate, I played against Arthur for a decade and never got hold of him. He said, if they kick long and I got the ball, who do you reckon bash me? Yeah, Arthur. <laughs> yeah, because I, he, he said I, I, I was like, I couldn't mix my game up yeah. like him. Like he yeah. had, he, mate, for a big man, he had pretty good speed too yeah. so he could... You know, he had offloading the billy and he said, I chased him for 10 years, mm. never got a hold of him. Yeah, that, it's funny you say that. I sat in uh, just earlier today, uh, I was over at my mum and dad's house and I was sitting talking to my dad who played at the Dragons back in the 70s. I said, what, what did you think of, what, what's your uh, opinion of Blocker or what's your thoughts of Blocker with the, how he played or how would you describe Blocker's game, dad, or how, what comes to mind for you guys, mate? He was unbelievably tough, but he had unbelievable skill as well. Oh, now, in this day and nice age... Mate. Well, this day and age, is this, usually the skillful players are a bit the, the fancy pants and they yeah. don't like the contact. Well, now, the, now, the tough bastards are the ones who have got no skill and that's just, they're too tough for their own good. Exactly. So back then, especially in the... It, it was... You know, it, all eras are tough, so don't get me wrong. It's tough to play now, but in terms of the dirtiness, I guess you can call for, or lack of a better word, that ruthless tough. Yeah. You had that, but you had to be skillful as well, didn't you? Or you wouldn't have survived. You had to have a pass in you. You had to be able to play because mm. you just get... Bashed if well, you, you didn't. You learn how to use your body properly. No one, yeah. you know, I remember Warren Ryan said to me one day, he, mate, by the way, he's, a, he's the best coach that yeah. I ever had, like, like tactically, but he was so abrupt the way he, <laughs> the way he said things, it was terrible, you know? <laughs> you know, like, but 
<laughs> he was so smart. And he said to me, he said, you know what? In 20 years' time, school teachers are going to be teaching. They're going to be all the coaches with all this pusta malaka on the, uh, <laughs> on the blackboard and all that. He said, who's going to actually teach these guys how to play? And you think about it now. Yeah. Like, mate, mate, wonderful athlete. Great athletes. Tough as nails. Fit. They're more like athletes now. Yeah. But you, you know, you, I, mate, I've done, I've done, you know, with junior kids and that, and d- done catch and pass skills and all that sort of stuff. Mm. Mate, they battle mm. because they've never done it. But if you stick at it, and the thing that I've noticed about, you know, the, the blokes today, the, the kids today, and mate, and and more in life too. Mm. If something's a little bit hard, they give up. Like, you know, if if something was a little bit hard, like I, mate, you know what drove me, Brett. I didn't want to go back to Wollongong because I remember I, I remember mates of mine, Con Dumas, he's another one left us. He'd probably be down there. But my <laughs> opinion, he was a, he we was, might be joining him once. He was, he was my too. great mate, and um, you know he he, uh, he was a great football, tough as nails, mm. mate. And uh, and I remember him. He said, "Mate, don't be one of those blokes." When I went to Sydney, he, he kept in touch with me all the time, and that and he was only about five years older than me, and he coaches when we were eighteen and seventeen mm. and all that. He said, mate, don't be one of those blokes that you walk into the Crown Hotel in, in Wollongong the same blokes are sitting at the bar mm. and they go, see him? See that bloke there? Mate, he could have been anything. There's plenty he, of them, isn't and there? And he'd go, mate, could have, should have, would have. So, so I, I, I didn't want to... I, mate, it was, it was a fear of, fear of failure because mm. there'd been that many blokes that had, that had played here and then gone back home with their tails between their mm. legs and, and, uh, and, and didn't make it. Mate, um, Gary Jack was a year older than me, mate. Toughest, toughest fullback I've ever seen in my life, but tough with a quid too, yeah. as you know. Yeah, very tight, story. wasn't he? Great stories. But he, um, mate, I'd, I'd never seen a bloke more dedicated. Down in Wollongong, there's a, there's a mountain called Mount Campbell. He's a Wollongong. He's a Wollongong boy, boy yeah. too. He's a year older than me. So did you, did you just play against each other growing up, or in the no, no, we're, teams? No, we were in the same size. So it's not the same team. Same, same Western Suburbs mm-hmm. Devils, but he was a year up. Year up. But we did, we did eventually play when he was 18. I was 17 and I played in the under-18s mm. with him. Did you knock around with him then? Or they sort of just kept not, in the not, same not, age group? Yeah, just yeah. Kept, kept around our own mates. Yeah. But there was a mountain down there called Mount Kembla. Mate, he used to run up there every... You see how powerful he was? Nah, how many times you, did you ever run up? <laughs> Hitchhike, mate. Oh, <laughs> Hitchhike. Hey, there's a good story. Around here is the bay, seven kilometres. You know the bay right yeah. there at Des Moines? Anyway, when I first come to the Tigers, Percy Knight and Larry <laughs> Coral were here. And uh, I could never understand how they used to beat me around the bay. They used to catch a cat. Yeah, you know? But uh, you know what? Over there on that side, over there on that left-hand side where the Wayne Pearce Hill is, yep. in, 19, in 1978, Larry Corrow um, went on the Kangaroo Tour. He scored 28 tries mm. that year untouched. I'd only ever seen the Hill stand for two blokes when they got the ball. One was Larry Coral and the other one was the Pearl. Yeah. Uh, my, my old man said he, earlier today, he said, he said he'd never seen anyone as quick as Larry Coral. He said he was just lightning. Mate, he was unbelievable. But he, he had this, um, he sort of right arm that sort of yeah. gave a bit limp. I don't know, it was weird. <laughs> but when he took off, but, but the other thing that he had, not only wonderful uh, evasive skills, down the track, they put him at 5'8". Mm. He played with the, with the Titans. They weren't called the Titans then. I think it was the Giants or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, Seagulls or the Giants. He played 5'8". <laughs> Mate, he could play. Mm. The most under... And I, I was talking about Percy Knight a little bit. He's the most underrated player I've ever played with. Yeah. Mate, he was Skillful. unbelievable. So they were playing for Monaro against the Poms. Yep. And Balmain went down to see Percy Knight play. Yeah. That's and the they, Canberra region, isn't the it? Cam- yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Monaro. Yeah, yeah, yeah Canberra against Monaro, yeah. Yep. So they go down to watch... Um, Percy Knight. Percy Knight was outstanding, yeah. but this Larry Corris scored a hat trick against the Poms or something. They bought both of them, and that's how that's how Larry yeah, come yeah. to Larry John Coral and mate, yeah. what a the Prince they used to call him, what a champion. Well, you talk about coming to Sydney and not wanting to go back. You, you signed with the Tigers yeah. in '82 for you know, the '82 season. You, I did, but I, in those days you had to play two years in the juniors. Mm. So I signed with the Tigers and I played two years for the Balmain Police mm. Boys. So um, I played. So two who, years who, who signed you? Keith Barnes. Keith Barnes. Yeah, and how hard was it when you? Because you spoke about you didn't want to be, want to be one of those players who go back, which is all well and good, but also it's not only on the field as a young kid when you move away from home. It's li- it's adapting to life. You, life the big in the city. big city, and, and you know, obviously Balmain. It's a stone's throw to the city. I it's thought, a two I, minutes to the city in a cab. You know, I thought the Sydney Harbour Bridge would open up for those big boats to come <laughs> through. You know? They used to laugh about <laughs> that all the time. But uh, you, you know, if. If footy's in your blood and that's what you want to do and that's all you want to do and that's all you're probably all right at, yeah. mate, you've got to make it work. Yeah. I mean, you know, I remember I remember before we played first grade, we were playing a little bit of reserve grade and Gary Jack and I lived in this hostel 
before, you know, because we were just also rams yeah. before we even, you know, made it into grade and all that. But we used to get up every morning and go in and, and they'd pick blokes out for a day's work into this, um, you know, and you'd bloody hit pipes or dig <laughs> holes or whatever. And, mate, I reckon, looking back on it, mate, it was the worst time of my life. I was at home sick, mm. but I, I had him with me and... And I was at home sick and we were with all these old people in this hostel and, and I'm thinking, mate, I, I, I got it, you know, I'm home. I want to go home. But, yeah. mate, we stuck it hung out. Hung in there. We, we hung in there. We played a couple of years. Well, I played a couple of years in the juniors. Jimmy played with Western Suburbs, the Magpies first, yeah. you know, for a year. Nah. Yeah, him and Terry Lamb and that played together. And then Keith Barnes um, got Gary Jack over to uh, over to Balmain and then I'd, I'd served me two years in the juniors and then come straight through. But, Brett, you know the great thing about, about that Mate, back in the day, mate, tough blokes that have played a long, long time. Steve Stopper-Lavis, mm. mate, unbelievable, you know. All those sort of guys. Billy Hilliard, um, they'd all played a lot of first grade. Neil Whittaker. Yep. So all of a sudden, Benny the and I come along. The old CEO of... Yeah, well, all of a sudden, Benny and I come along. And So mate, what year was that you and Benny debuted? Was it 83? 82. 82. I, I debuted... Debut in 82. Yeah, we, we debuted in 82. But none of those guys... And Benny debuted the same year as you? He did. But none of them... None of them got dirty on us. You know, yeah. you know how blokes get a bit dirty? They were just like all for the mm. club. And, you know, we, we had blokes, Johnny Owens and, you know, all mm. those sort of guys. Uh, that they played here for 10 years in reserve grade. They played a little bit of first yeah. grade, but they were just good club men. Yeah. You know, Michael Marcuda yeah. looks more like Fred Flintstone than Fred <laughs> Flintstone does. You know, all those sort of guys. And um, they, they sort of like, you know, Frank Stamp was our first yep. coach. Yep. He, he uh, if you look at it, he put the youngest pack in the history of the game he, he was coach of the Kangaroos and then he yep. comes to the Tigers. He sort of dropped all of those guys and put all his mm. kids in. Well, was there a, a, a sort of a feeling? Because 83 years make the finals for the first time since 77 oh, or something. That's right, it was something like that, yeah. Was, was there a feeling? First of all, you must have been, you know, honoured and proud to make your debut. How was that? Do you remember your debut? And where, yeah. was, where was it at? Yeah, I remember the debut. You won't believe this. It was against Wollongong. It was against Illawarra. They Town just, in Wollongong? They'd just come in the comp. Yeah. So it was against Illawarra. You know who made me debut with me? Gary Jack. Yeah. And, and Benny? Olsen Filipana. Yeah. Where, where was Olsen? 5'8"? Five 5'8". Eight? Five eight. Yeah. The arch bumper. I've never seen a bloke like that. Yeah. Oh, mate, he's, I, I, seen him, I seen him come to Cronulla one day. It was a public holiday Monday. We were playing on a Monday afternoon. And he had his... Um, at his garby, he was a garbo. He still is. Mm. Yeah, he was a garbo. Turns up the game and says to Frank Stan, "I don't want to play today." <laughs> <You know? laughs> but mate, I seen him. Mate, what did he play? Yeah, he did. <laughs> mate, I never seen any. You know, blokes would be. You know, we'd be head button lockers and warming up and going <laughs> mental. He'd be asleep in the corner, Olsen. <laughs> but I saw him. Um, Brad Izzard from Penrith made um, made the state of origin real early. I think he might have played in the second or third yep. origin, whatever it was. And they were writing this bloke up and Olsen, like, well, he no, hit so. him here one day at Leichhardt. Mate, honestly, mm. I reckon they're still trying to fill the hole in here <laughs> that hard. But then in test matches, we always used to tour all over, over to New Zealand all the yep. time and Olsen played against Wally. And Olsen was telling me, you're quite unassuming, mm. bloke. Make him play squash and tennis. It's skillful, you know? And um, Wally snubbed him at a, uh, at a function because they used to have functions and that. Mate, he come out and tore Australia yeah. apart. He was unbelievable. But he, he was a, mate, he's a great man, great player. Mm. Still around the right area, yeah. you know, never left, you know. Well, how – now, I know what you would have been like as a, you know, let's just say late 80s when you're the premier front rower in the game. If a young young buck come in and you're playing them as, a, you know, a young front rower and an opposing team with a good reputation. You, we'll get to you. In 84, you play for New, New South Wales. I made, yeah. So, I yeah, so, so 82, you, you debut. So – 82, 83, you must have been in some pretty good form to, you know, when you, as soon as your feet hit the ground, so to speak. Was there any old front rowers looking to, well, hang on, look at this young kid, you know, oh. you know what it's like, let's, let's shorten this young kid up. Was there any, any oh, of the old boys come after you, so to speak, in, in those against opposing teams? Mate, there was a million of them. I played yeah. against Les Boyd and all yeah. those sort of guys. Craig Young probably got me the best. I, mate, I, when, as I was saying, when I was growing up, Arthur Boots and Craig Young and all yeah. that, they were my heroes. Craig, Craig had won a premiership from, yeah. Cor- like, he lived in Coromel. Yeah. You know, we He'd won like, two, 77. Yeah. He captain 79. Captain, captain 79. Yeah. And didn't say much, but, mate, I, I've never seen a bloke that could move a scrum on his own. <laughs> anyway, he, we, were playing a, we were playing in an Amco Cup game or something like that, and he hit Benny late. And I, I sort of, oh, mate, we're only 
20, 21 mm. or something, 21 or something. So I grabbed Benny and I said, mate, come on, mate, he's got you, hooker. He's, you know, Benny says, I never left him in a scrum in my life. Yeah. Always, always stood there and waited for him to get up or whatever, mm. you know. So I thought, you know what, I'm, this place not me bloody hook around, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a dig here. Mm. So I didn't even pack and I just like we started bloody fighting, you know. <laughs> anyway, I, I learnt the greatest lesson of my life and Craig and I are good mates, you know. Our mothers played tennis yeah. together, can you believe <laughs> that? But he never said anything, he'd growl at you, mate. He was yeah. a tough bastard, you know. Anyway, the scrum the scrum collapsed and I'm on the ground and he didn't say anything, he just looked down and went <laughs> I stood stomped on me melon. <laughs> on your head. On my head. Right, and it didn't say nothing. Just look, just looked, and then sort of run off. You well, know? It's sort of like a badge of honour, sort well, of thing, isn't it? If you if you weren't good, he wouldn't give a rat's ass. Well, about you. well, I don't know about that, but he's probably just you know, yeah, this marking is how, his this territory. Is, this is how it is, mate. You know, if you want to buggerise around with me, this is what you're going to get. Now, what were scrums like back then? Obviously, the scrums in this day and age are different. They just lean on each other. It was quite a nasty place to be back. Back in the seventies and eighties, and even earlier, it was. It was um, made. It was head clashes every. <laughs> like that's how. Well, you have seen it, mate. You, yeah. you know, blokes would put the ball in, and you know, just you know, just you'd, you'd clash heads, mate. Playing with, I was lucky enough. I played in the Origins with um, with Roycey Simmons, mm. mate. Roycey, mate. Roycey was a great player. In the, with those sides, you had you had Sterling and Lewis as the halves. Yeah. So they wouldn't put Benny in the Australian sides and all that because he's a playmaker himself. He's a playmaker, he? yeah. see, mate. Best player this place has ever yeah. seen, Benny Elias. Mate, unbel- I'll talk about him yeah. a bit later. He's unbelievable. Anyway, so Royce, <clears throat> Royce, Royce was just more a delivery one. Yeah, but mate, to tough, tough, mate, yeah. mate, hit your front on. And yeah. anyway, he'd say, you know, we'd be at training and that, playing against Queensland. And that so we'd go in packing with our heads together. He said, don't you flinch, we're, we're going in together. Yeah. So we, you know, <laughs> mate, mate, head clashes every bloody, every five seconds, you know. I remember him in an origin, he got knocked out about three times, won the man of the match. <laughs> he can't even remember it, he's getting up, stumbling all over the joint, you know. But I like, I love playing with, uh, I love playing with Roycey, but yeah. Benny was my yeah. favourite. Now, this is actually, um, this comes from Fletch. Fletch asked this question yesterday, and he, I did SEM with him and Joel Kane. He goes, make sure you ask Fletch this. Now, Fletch, he was a huge Les Davidson fan growing up. Yeah. And he thought Les Davison was unbeatable. Now he goes, "You'll probably play this down," but he reckons he's seen you absolutely give it to Les no, Davison. I mean, he I said lucky. you. He said you. But he's. I was lucky. But he said he goes, "It was a big. What they call him, Big Bundy." Bundy. Big, big, big Bundy. Yeah. yeah he, said, he said he thought he was unbeatable until one day well, you played him and you absolutely give it to Les Davison. No, 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 mate. That's it's that's folklore. That's that gets bigger than what it is. You know, <laughs> Les is a great mate of mine. We um we played with Warrington together. What about yep. this for a pack? Warrington. We played at Warrington, right? So, so Warrington by me and Les. They've already got Les Boyd. <laughs> They've got um, who was the bloke that bashed Dowling in the uh, Kevin yeah, Tammany? Kevin Tammany. And he's lock- a Kiwi, wasn't he? Oh, Kiwi. mate, whoa, whoa. he's a New Zealand <laughs> boxing champion, couldn't yeah. he? But he put that many lumps on my head one day. <laughs> but um, and then Mike Gregory, the English yeah. captain, was yeah. our lock. But the only problem was we never played that much together because one of us was always suspended. Was suspended, you know. <laughs> But mate, they were mate, great player. Les, Les was uh, Les was the same as what you're talking about before. Tough as nails and mate, great work rate, great mobility, but could offload the ball and yeah. that too. He could pass. And back in those days, when we used to play South, mate, Ian Roberts was the best player in the yeah. game back then. Before he did his knees, he was unbelievable. Just um, and I was lucky enough to play with Clyde and that too. Yeah. Probably get the Clyde. He was unbelievable too. But you know they had uh, David Boyle, Mario Fennick. Was Spud there then, or did he come no, a bit No, Spud late, come later. a bit later. Yeah. Spud come a bit later. I think Peter you, Kelly? I think you, might, you might find his headgear in the stand <laughs> yes, one day. Yeah, I'll rip his headgear <laughs> off one day, yeah. But, um, mate, Souths were unbelievable. Mm. I remember, uh, mate, one of the toughest, quietest blokes mm. I've ever played with, unbelievable, was another bloke from, from down south coast, mm. from Nowra, named Bruce Maguire. Yeah. Oh, mate, didn't he knock him out? Anyway, mate, we, we were playing and... He said to me, we, we, we were playing at Redfern. Mm-hmm. Mate, we used to get spat on and hit with bloody umbrellas and all that sort of It was mad. It was like a zoo. And uh, we, he sidled up next to me at Redfern Oval, you know, putting their gear on and all that. And he said, uh, it was his debut against them blokes. And he said, um, mate, um, you know, what's the go with these, you know, what's the go with South Sydney and that? And I said, <laughs> You're asking the right bloke. Yeah. I said, every man for himself. <laughs> I did. I said, every man for himself, mate. But he was, uh, he could handle it. We were watching that. We played. I was telling you about the game we played Penrith here one day, and MG and John Cartwright were the guns. They were gun players, mate. Yeah. Ball skills, big, yeah. strong. 
anyway, Bruce Bruce jumped jumped up about here about the forty metre line, and and knocked John Cartwright mm. clean out. And Benny was next to him, and Warren Ryan was a coach. And Benny was next to him, and he said, um, "Oh, I made it come in after the game. You see, oh, I knocked that cart right out." And the coach went, "Oh, yeah." Anyway, we were watching the video that time, and he slowed it down. He said, "Oh, is that you knocking uh, John Cart right out, Benny? Is it?" Yeah, Benny said he knocked. <laughs> yeah, he didn't talk it up and that. <laughs> Bruce McGuire. They showed the thing. Yeah, it was Bruce, <laughs> Bruce just sitting there, not didn't say a word. Now you talk about Benny. Benny, you know I know Benny quite well. He, he's Can't, a great character, mate. Lovely Can't, fella. But you hear the great stories about him biting himself on the. On the handle, I played whatever. that game, and he got. You know, he it's obviously one of the great scallywags, but he seems to, like you're obviously his protector. Was there ever a point where you going, Benny? Shut no. your mouth, no, never. Because you had, you had to look after him, didn't you? Oh, well, not me. You look after himself. Yeah, I'm good. telling, yeah. bouncing Benny Elias, yeah. mate. You know, you know those guys with real powerful legs and powerful yeah. asses. That's what that, yeah. he was so powerful and quick and strong. I seen him play here. This is no word of lie. I seen him play at Leichhardt one day in a first grade. Mm. He chips over regathers, chips over the fullback regathers and scores under the post. And we're going ape shit, going, mate, how good's that? No. And he goes, what? It's it was like, it was like. Yeah, that's what I normally do. What? What's the big deal? <laughs> but he was, uh, I, I reckon, mate, honestly, I reckon he's he's the best player of this club since 1908. I reckon he's the best player that's ever been. Now, you talk about Benny. Benny, now, now correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, because obviously I remember the 90s quite well. Yeah. But was, I don't know if it's a great recollection of the 80s, but he was sort of the first hooker that brought in the ball skills and playing off the nine because th- your hookers used to be more like like your Roycey Simmons type. Tough. Now, I, I remember, ball, yeah. I think, remember, I thought, actually, you were manager. Remember we played the country in 2008, country origin, yeah. we were down at Wollongong, and we went to like the 2008, it was the centenary year, yep. and they named the country t- Team of the Century. And the, and the hook was a little like a front, I'm not too sure who they, who they picked. Can't remember. Who Noel it was. Kelly, maybe would have been. It might have been. But he was more of a big old front because back in the day, it, they it was just yeah. like they were throwing watermelons off the ground. You yeah, know what I mean? Back in a truck. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. So it was it was Benny the first you can remember that you know there'd be you guys had set moves off the nine and decoy runners going everywhere. Benny was down, jumping out like like what a hooker does yeah. these days. Yeah. Um, Warren Ryan, you, mate, you have a look at the, the the way the game's gone now with the six agains and all that sort of stuff. It's all flat and fast. Yeah. That's how he played. Mm. We we played with players in motion, as you were mentioning. Like we had, mate, we'd have, I don't know, we'd have twenty ruck plays. Yeah. But what we did, what we used to do, is the bloke who would call the call the play, right, would be the decoy. Yeah. And the, the Benny would give the ball to the non noise person, which it doesn't when fatigue's happening and markers and all that sort of stuff. But he was, mate, he was a genius and just, mate, just, he had this great ability of hitting the right person. Yep. Mate, he dummy it all the time yeah. and all that sort of stuff and people would say, oh, he rolls the ball out of his arm and all yeah. that. Do you know the real great players, you know what they're going to do and they, and they can still do it? He, yeah. he was like that. They knew exactly what he was going to do. But they couldn't stop it. No, they couldn't stop it. <laughs> so, they're, they're, you know, you play with blokes like that. Yeah. They're the great players, the yeah. blokes who can... Who can do something that you? Oh, he's gonna, you know. Yeah, he's gonna do it. And he still <laughs> and does, he does it, it, you know. But he had, mate. He had, mate. Imagine yeah. big zero, because we, we used to try and get one on ones all the time. Yeah. You know, a lot of a lot of the times, so I don't reckon a lot of the teams do that. You know, nah. they play for field position. Yeah. But you imagine big zero and that yeah. bloody pounding down on you. <laughs> well, you mate, unbelievable. Well, quick, I was going to ask you a bit later, but I'll ask you now. And this part sort of comes to obviously, is, you know, you guys develop one of the greatest. Packs in, in history like yourself, Ciro. Now you mentioned obviously Benny, but Junior, Junior great captain, Kevin right. Hardwick, Bruce McGuire. Obviously, there was a few others there. Stevie Edmund, Steve Edmund. But obviously, there was Penrith. There was South. The back end of the eighties, early nineties, there was the Canberra, the Bulldogs. Obviously, the Bulldogs. now I remember when the Knights came in and Alan McMahon was the coach. Because Dad was the under twenty ones coach. Now they built a Ford pack. Their their philosophy was well. We might not beat them, but we're going to try and bash them. We're going to bruise them. Or we're going to yeah. try and they go, well, you know what, they weren't the most talented. Now, obviously, around 90, 91 or Bucks 8. Bugsy yeah, Sam Stewart and not, uh, uh, Mark Sargent, yeah. Chief Hogan come in, the, uh, Bugsy Mullane, Mark Glanville. Bugsy, what a tough you man. Know, Bugsy, um, Glenny like Miller. Bugsy, you know, yeah. they had Mick McLean there yeah. for uh, Robbie McCormack was the hooker. You know, like that. that's what they built the club on originally was the, just a, a tough pack. And, and because cause we were sort of the – Underdogs did up have, there. Did it have something to do with the Steel City? I think I it reckon, was. Hundred you know, percent, it was. But, but I think class. they never had the money, and they thought, you know what, we, we they, and especially because they were a new team in '88, they they didn't have the the big marquee stars yet. So they thought, you know what, yeah. 
we, we're not going to outskill them or out, outplay them. We'll out we're going to try and, you know, and, and, but that seemed to be a common theme back then more than ever is those big, tough, fearless, uncompromising packs. Yeah, no, you're 100% right. And, mate, I, I remember playing against Penrith and all that, you know, Matty Goodwin and all. Yeah. And, you know, Peter Kelly. Peter Kelly, <laughs> mate. Peter Kelly. Did you ever see that day Les whacked him and knocked yes, his head off? Lucky mate? he got his head <laughs> Lucky and he goes, just pointing at him. <laughs> but, he, mate, they were tough men. Mm. Louis Mortimer. Yeah. Mate, Louis is a centre. Yeah. But back in those days when we played Origin and that, like, Queensland centres were Mel Meninga and Gene Miles. Gene Miles, Gene Miles is the best centre I've seen. Yeah. Mate, unbelievable. But they were, but they were brutal too. Yeah. They, they want to hurt you. <laughs> but, mate, Louis... Every time Louis Mortimer, Chris Mortimer, yeah. played against played against them, and they 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 acknowledge it too. Yeah. They say, "Mate, this bloke, this bloke well, had a go." Chris know? Mortimer's my sister's his father-in-law, actually. Really so. good bloke, yeah, too. tough bugger, but yeah. a good bloke, yeah, champion bloke, schooner drinker, she loves a schooner, loves good, a schooner, good judge of a schooner too. Now, eighty-four, you you start playing New South Wales, and you're now you're a you know you're a common you're you're one of the first picked. How much did that mean to you, Earl? Especially eighty-four, we. We didn't win the series to eighty five. So what That's was right. it? What was it like going in eighty four as a young fella? You're still only early twenties. Yeah, obviously you're proud to, to win it, but it, what was it like going to face this you know formidable Queensland team as a kid? I, I'll never ever forget it. The first game I played my first game at Lang Park. Yeah. And um, yeah, Cax, sorry to interrupt. Caxton, Caxton Street. Street is that Street? true? Yeah, yeah. Oh, talk, mate, talk they, us about the bus trip. Oh, the whole bus trip. We're going down there, and they're pouring us with cans. There's about five thousand throwing cans at, at the bus and all that. And I remember Turvey Morton was our captain. He goes, stop the bus, stop the bus. Anyway, we stopped the bus. And I said, yeah, what are we going to do? Anyway, they started rushing the bus. And he goes, start the bus. <laughs> but at Lang Park in those days, you had to, mate, it was a bloody uh, intimidating place. Because you, you'd walk in, you walked in through the bar to go into the dressing rooms. And, mate, they hammered us, you know. I'm sort of a young kid going. Was it in a cage or anything? Could they get to you? The no, no, but you just walked straight through the bar and through this turnstile thing and back into the sheds. But in those days, they had the like the cement, you know, the cement. You could hear, yeah. the, you could hear. The, studs, everyone had studs pepper. and all that sort of stuff. And you'd run out, and this deafening noise. You know how the fireworks go off, and we'd run out there, and mate, was going, wow, what's going on here? But I was lucky because my first game I played with Craig, Craig Young, him and I are in the front row, and uh, they kick off, and Dave Brown hits him with an elbow, and they brung, brought the sponge out, and I'm grabbing the sponge off the bloke trying to wake him up, going. <laughs> But it's funny how you, you survive, don't you? You know, and mate, the first the first couple of years in first grade for me were survival because mate, they were, mate, it was like <laughs> it was like getting kill aerated or everywhere. Yeah. Kill, kill or be killed. But um, I remember it was funny because my first taste of Lang Park was I played in the under 18s for New South Wales against Queensland. Um, one of the Wallace brothers was in the Queensland side. Um, Anyway, I remember after the game, it was that pack, the first ever State of Origin in 1980, and I see this guy run out, and there's snot and shit, and <laughs> he's got bloody black polish under his arms, and he's got white powder all over him and all that, and he's fired up. Uh, that was after. Uh, that was, was after. for the first ever Origin. Mate, he hit everyone but the bar, ball boy that day. <laughs> Mate, I'm telling you, he went ape. Uh, but that, that was my first ever, mm. this is Origin, like, yeah. Wow. And I don't, you know, I, I don't reckon it's changed for anyone who yeah. plays ever plays in their first Origin. Yeah. It's always it's daunting. The hardest thing for me, Brett, I've got to say was because I'm a um, bit of a marcher, I want to get yeah. on with it and all that sort of stuff. Hanging around at eight o'clock at night was torture <laughs> for me. You know, you get up, have your breakfast, you couldn't sleep. Uh, you know, try to have a sleep mm. in the Arvo, and bloody, a bit of light would be coming in, you'd have the shits. And yeah. I, I don't know, it was, it was real, a real weird one for me. And, you know, you talk to a lot of blokes now and you, you always hear, always want to listen to blokes, what they're saying and about origin and all that. And mate, Most of them say, blink and it's over. If you don't get yourself involved, yeah. blink and it's that quick and that fast and that, that powerful that it's all over. Yeah. Or, you know, you've got to, you, you can't dip your toe in. Yeah. You can't, you know, like some club yeah. games and that you could play and, you know, or yeah. just... Ease your know, way through. I'll just, I'll just ease my way into it, you know. Just enough to get but through. But in this, if you don't, if you, especially in the front row, and that, yeah. if you don't, uh, if you don't dig in or get straight into it, you, you know, you're in a bit of trouble. Did, did you know? And just, just probably not just so much origin, but front row in general. You know, playing halfback, I always knew that. You know, a, a large percent of how I play is going to be the outcome of the game. You know, so whatever the result is, I'm going to have a big. You know, how I perform yeah. is going to have a. You know, and that's for most halfbacks in any team. 
But it's also for front rowers as well, you know. Did, did, did you have that going, well, if I don't get over the top of my opposition number today and I don't create room for Gary Freeman or yeah. Benny or yeah. whoever's there, you know, we might not win. And, and that's a, that's a tough thing because sometimes with halfbacks, you've got to beat them with sometimes a bit of skill and some smarts. But with Numbers forwards, and all that, yeah. but, but whether you win or lose, your job's the same every week. You've just got to bash the shit yeah. out of the bloke in front of you. And there's no easy one. No, right? there's you, no easy way to go around it. See, we, we win by 40. You've had a blinder. Yeah. And you, you haven't got a mark on you. No. We, we win by 40, we still got bashed. Yeah, win no, or lose by 40, no, you're going to get bashed. Saying, yeah. You still get bashed yeah. anyway. So yeah. it's, you, might as well, you might as well get stuck into it. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a strange one. You know why? Because I, I grew up watching the footy in the, in the 70s and then played in the 80s. And, mate, all the blokes that I watched and I followed, I thought that's how you play the game. I yeah. thought you fight and kick and scratch and rumble for every every little centimetre you can get. I, I didn't know any different. I'd watch these guys play, you know, and I, I thought, like, getting a smack in the mouth or a, a head-eye tackle or, or, or a cut that's on your standard. head or what was... That's... I don't know. That's how that's that's how it is. Well, that's all like you knew, wasn't it? Yeah, well, if you don't... Yeah, if you don't, if you don't like it, go and play tiddly with yeah. whatever you want, lawn bowls or something. Yeah. Well, mate, you, you, 84, your debut, it must have been a huge honour, but the, the next year, 85, must have been big for New South Wales. Yeah, mate, it was the first time we'd won yeah. the Origin Series. How, how, was, how was that? What are your memories of... Oh, my, my memories were... Because for were, now, that, that's like, for New South Wales, that's it. That's it. That's a part of our history, that first yeah. series. That should be the trophy. Steve Moore yeah. on his hands and knees. You know, for New South, South Wales, that was yeah. that must have been a huge honour to be a part of that. You know, you know how... A lot of timing and things happen for a reason. Uh, you know, we had a bloody young side because mm. the older blokes had, were getting a bit older and they'd been belted by mm. Queensland in the first five years or whatever. Then all of a sudden they put a young side in and Steve Mortimer was our captain. He was a bit older and, mate, he was just, um, I don't know, he just had this he had this spell over everyone. Yeah. He just unbelievable being able to talk about, you know, the hatred for Queensland. They hated us too, of course they did. Mm. But he just had this wonderful knack and... I can remember, I can remember, you know, tough runs needed to be made, and I'd watch this little halfback get into the dummy half and scoot yeah. and get absolutely garroted, and yeah. I'd be thinking, mate, I got a bloody, I got a bloody help this bloke, yeah. you know. But he, he was a sort of leader, and Wayne Pearce was a bit, a lot the same too. They weren't big talkers, mate. They were Actions. doers. Yeah. They were, mate, they were just doers and. Um, yeah, I remember. I remember. You know, just the the relief of mm. New South Wales finally winning one because you know yourself, mate. Playing Origin, a lot of it, a lot of it gets in your head. Yeah. Those Queenslanders <laughs> get in your head a bit, you know, <laughs> don't they? They do, yeah. especially if the, you know, you, you look at the period we've just gone through with Queensland and, and they've done it again this year. But we hadn't won one up to that point. And then, you know, and then, you, and then you we, had, we hadn't even won a series. I know. And then you had, you had like, um, you had like Wally Lewis, and then. You know Darren Lockyer, and then it come. Then Cameron Smith comes <laughs> along. Skip Cameron. You know what I mean? Like we haven't sort of had that rule run. I think, in my opinion, what the difference is, and I'm not saying that we don't love it as much as them or whatever. I think the fact that they could only pick like 20 blokes or 30 yeah. blokes galvanised them. Whereas yeah. I don't know, we we sort of like down here, you could pick. Yeah, you, know, you can pick three two or three teams, sides, yeah. you know. I reckon that's uh, I reckon that's got something to do with it. Well, how was it? It's, it's sort of different today, you know. There's obviously, for lack of a better term, violence. I'll say. I don't know if that's the right word to use, but you know, there's, there's not there's not punching like there is in the game back then. Obviously, that the elbows knocks off the ball. How was it jumping into these Origin teams, where back then you literally had? I'm sure there was grudges against obviously, like the, like. The, the, the level of violence in games was a lot different then. So, yeah. level of, so how was it jumping then in, and trying to gel as a as a rep team together? It was tough because yeah. it, it was mostly Bulldogs and Parramatta yeah. and, and a sprinkling of the Tigers, Blake. Um, I remember, you, it's funny you talk about that. Ronnie Willie was our coach. And back in the day, Ronnie Willie was a coach. Les Hobbs was a conditioner and we had a doctor. Three staff. You have a look now. There's nearly a, there's, well, there's nearly a staff for every player. Yeah, wish they put me on it too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I missed out last year. <laughs> but um, I remember playing... Queensland had beat us up in Queensland and we are playing them at the cricket ground. And Ronnie Willie's the coach. Uh, Wayne Pierce is the captain. They, they tossed the coin. 
And mate, what a buzz playing at the cricket ground, you know, the old member stand. Yeah. Mate, I loved it because I loved all, I, I'm like you, mate, a footy pearl. Yeah. I loved all the, the ghosts History and the spirits of, yeah, of the, the same, Sydney Cricket ground. 100%. So anyway, I'll never forget it. Wayne, Wayne comes back in and Ronnie Willie says, who won the toss? And you'll see this on the, on the video if you go back to this year. And uh, Wayne says, um, you know, we won the toss. He said, does that mean we're kicking off? He didn't even know if he won the toss, we're kicking <laughs> off, you know. He said, yeah, we're kicking off. He said, good fight. <laughs> So we kick off. Ronnie Willie said that. Ronnie Willie, fight. So we, we, we kick off. And I think, I think it was Gene Miles got the ball and run it back and it was just on straight away. Do you have a favourite teammate from, obviously, in that New South Wales era? Like, did you, from another club or someone you loved playing with or someone you had, someone you, once you played with them, you, you, you thought, geez, I enjoy playing. You probably didn't appreciate as much when yeah. you're playing against them, you know, but really enjoyed I had a I had a great understanding with Tungsy. Yeah. We were similar sort of similar sort of players, I reckon. Yeah. Because he, he, he was he was pretty mobile across the ground. He could pass the ball. He was, and he gets stuck. But we um, we played a lot of Origins together and a lot of Test matches, yeah. and we had a pact. We had a pact that made if one if they if they want to go one if they want to go one of us they go back. They pull us. the cat's tail. They no, get no, the whole cat. That's it. One hundred percent. And that was our that was our sort of um, our mantra. Mm. Even when we played you know, against the Coo, mate, we, when we used to play the Cooies, the, the Sorensons, they were great players, mate. They had the, the Sorensons and yeah. Kevin Tamady and, mate, all those. Mark Facing Gra- the big Harker and that back Mark then, Graham, wasn't it? Yeah. Mark Graham, what a player he was. Yeah. Mate, he was Sonny Bill before Sonny yeah. Bill was. Yeah. Mark Graham, he's unbelievable. But, mate, we had some, we had some great wars in, with, uh, with, with New Zealand those yeah. days, especially if we'd go over to New Zealand and play at Colo Park, the tide would come in and the ground would be sloppy and wet. Yeah. Mate, he ain't. Ain't nowhere to ain't yeah. nowhere to hide there, you know. You, it was sort of it was on all the time, yeah. and uh, yeah. So, yeah, mate, I love playing with I love playing with Tungsy. I love playing with Pat Jarvis. Pat yeah. Jarvis, Pat Jarvis, a, mate, the toughest bloke I've ever seen. Like he he um, Pat wasn't skillful, and he'd probably tell you that. But you know, it was myself, him, and Roycey in the front row, and Pat Pat would do mate, it'd be nothing for him to do thirty hit ups, <laughs> but but thirty like. Hit ups that he gets bashed, at, you know what I mean. But <laughs> mate, he just pop up, play the ball. He just pop up, play the ball, and away mm. he go. I like I like playing with him. I love playing with Louis Mortimer. Yeah, love that. I love his aggression. Mm. You know, I like the way that he uh, used to take him on. We played um played New uh, New Zealand a World Cup final. Mm. It was Alfie Langer's debut for Australia over in Kalor Park. And this is the World Cup final. World Cup. And final. who is playing? New Zealand. In, and this is in New Zealand at, at Eden yeah. Park, nineteen eighty eight. Oh. And made all the press all week. They're going to bash us, and they got this young blonde-haired kid coming in. Alf, Alf, and this Alf. is really Al- Alfie's the start of it. He would have been a baby, wouldn't he? Mate, yeah. He was a man of the match by a yeah. mile, by a mile. We had all these set plays for him. And that Bozo, Bozo, Bozo was a good coach. Yeah. He was he was clever about picking out blokes and you know moves and all yeah. that. He's a bit like Warren Ryan was. But he's Alfie in in his first test. I think he scored a double yeah. in his first test, and uh, I think. I think, I, I, don't get me wrong, I, I played in a, a test match. This was the World Cup final too. It was, it was Gavin Miller's first test, believe it or not. He was a great player, Gavin Miller. But um, we were in the sheds before the game. He's playing in his first test mm. and, you know, we're doing all our bloody whatever you do and getting ready and all that. And the coach says, anyone got anything to say? And Gavin Miller stood up, first test. He goes, mate, I'm, I'm going to uh, bring the cutlery out today, boys. Get with me. The cutlery. She's just put it on a plate. Mate, <laughs> mate, you should have seen how, how good he Skillful. played. Skillful. Mate, unbelievable. He was unbelievable. Yeah. But, but we're all going, this bloke's cocky little bugger. <laughs> exactly. It's his first bloody test here, you know. Yeah, but, he, but he bloody went out and yeah. backed it up, you know. So I think, mate, I think it was something like it was something like 22 nil at half time or something like Smoking. we just – but Alfie was – mate, they couldn't touch him. He yeah. was unbelievable. And in those days, you look at all the halfbacks. I, I'm going to ask you a question. Where are all the halfbacks gone these yeah. days? Anyway. In those days, you know, Ricky Stewart and Alfie and... Sturlow at the end Stirl- of his career Stirling, in the 80s. Steve Mortimer, Ooh. Kevin Hastings. Yeah. Mate, they were all... Mate, everyone had a halfback and a 5'8". My little man, Gary Freeman, we played against him in a test match. He'd get on a stepladder and try and whack us and that. <laughs> he was mad. <laughs> so, whiz, so behave yourself, son. Well, back to... Come back to you, the Balmain boys here. Um, you know, did, was there a feeling there during the mid, mid-80s? mid You know, geez, we might have something here. You know, he's, a, he's got that group... You know, you spoke about it like Gary, Jack, and yourself, and Benny, and Junior, and and Ciro. You know, like you know, you're starting to build a, a really good team here. That's yeah. that's competitive every year. Was there a sense 
not only from your team, but I guess the community as well. That you know, we're going to be, you know, we can be really challenging for some premierships here with this with this team and this squad. We we thought we were. We got yeah. beaten eighty eight and eighty nine. Yeah. Um, the pearl the pearl comes in eighty eight, and I've never seen a bloke have an impact on a on a yep. team in my life. He got us to the grand final. Don't worry about yep. that in eighty eight. And you'll remember Terry Lamb yep. and knocked him out. They, they got him, but yep. but you know, he, mate, he talks about it now, and he goes, "Oh well, you know, fair game. He was a tough bugger, yep. you know." But what happened was the next year. So we we make the, the grand final eighty eight, and then eighty nine we play in the grand final. Mm. But if Ellery comes back to us in eighty nine. I reckon I reckon we're we're a bigger chance mm. than what we were mm. when we got beat mm. because we got beat an extra time as you know. Ellery take Ellery took the money. He was you know of course whatever. Mm. He took the money. He, he, went, West? he went and played the he went and played the season with mm. West after making the grand final oh. with us a year before. Had he had come back, I mean you know Keith and that Keith and that wouldn't have let him you know go to another club. Mm. But I don't know in those days whether they would have went to the extent of yeah. overextending themselves. But if he plays. If he plays with us, we're... we're now, we're, in ADA, we're, were you suspended for the... Final? I was, grand final. Do you, do you think, and 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 I, want you, and I know you are the most humble bloke there is, but do you think, you know, you make, obviously you make a difference if you play. Oh. Do you think you... Mm, do, you I, do you always think what if, if you'd been in that game? Always, I always think what if. I, I don't, mate, they were good on that day, Canterbury. Yeah. Mate, and some of the big match players they had, they, you know, in the 80s it was Parramatta and Canterbury all the yeah. way, and then... All of a sudden, the you know a young sort of Balmainish type side yeah. come through and sort of started challenging other teams. Uh, I, don't, I don't know whether I would have made that much a difference, mate. Um, I the great thing was when I was suspended in '88, I thought I'm getting to the end near the end of my career. You know, I might mm. I might never play in the grand final. Yeah. That's why I was so happy when we made the grand mm. final. Uh, we were the first through in the grand final mm. in '89, so we beat South, yeah. um, and. Mate, it was uh, it was it was like it was like a dream come true. You're going to play in the grand final, you know. You finally got your chance after being suspended the year mm. before. You know, you, you know, this is this is it. You know, all the balls are starting to yeah. to go on ducks the line. In a row, yeah. yeah. Now, I, you know, and I know you're quite humble, but I think one thing, if you won't wrap yourself, and I can guarantee you this, what you would have done is you would have made teammates feel better. You know, like like in '88, if you're yeah. there, you know, if, I just know as a halfback if, if my big number yeah. eight's suiting up. Oh well, I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm feeling ten foot tall and bulletproof. You, you, it's just, you know, when your best players are there, you certainly yeah. make other people feel comfortable. You go into '89, and you know, it's, it's it's there's never a more spoken about grand final. It's obviously one of the not if not the greatest grand final ever. So they say. And exactly right. And you know what? I I got the same in '03 three with with um, the Roosters. They talk about what a great grand final. Sattler's. Tackle. Tackle, yeah. It's not a great grand final. I, mean, I fucking hate it. Mate, you got beat. Mate, yeah. I'm the same. Yeah, and that's what I'm thinking about. And they always talk about the 89 grand final. I, I uh, would have rather played in the worst grand <laughs> final of all time and won. You know? Hey, hey, what? How hard is it for you to talk about anyway? After all these years? Hey, this, oh, still, mate, man, it's, mate, it's a bloody dagger to the heart. Yeah. I mean, we, um, uh, with 30 seconds to go, we're in front. Yeah. And... Uh, Chicka, Chicka Ferguson scored a try with 30 seconds mm. ago. I'll tell you how close we were to winning. Kerry Hems is my great mate who played in the grand final for me the year before in 88. He didn't play in 89. He went, he was, he, 30 seconds to go, he's going up to get the magnet of a champagne because we've... In the sheds up the tunnel? He thinks we've won. Comes back down <laughs> and Chicka Ferguson, Chicka scores. Ferguson scores. But, you know, I always, always try and, mate, I'm filthy, of course we've got, but of course I'm filthy a bit, but yeah. I try and look at it at another way, you see their side. Yeah, unbelievable. Bill Sherman, Inga, Chicka Ferguson, you look Lazo, back now. Bradley Clyde. But do you, do you ever think like there was, there was Benny, Benny's field goal? Mick Neal gets ankle tapped oh, by no. Mal. You that know? was a set play too, you know. And, and and I guess the big one, you talk about if you had played, would you have won? Now, it's one of the most famous interchange. Getting that, jagged. <laughs> you and your, you and Ciro, like, do, do you think Wok, and I'm not, Warren Ryan's one of the, most innovative coaches ever, one of the smart, greatest coaches ever. Mm. Do you think he thought he had it in the bag? Why? Do you ever know why he brought you and Sierra off? Because there's no doubt you're two of the most intimidating well, big men on the field, and then he takes you off, and all of a sudden it's an avalanche towards the, the Raiders. Mate, you know, you know what killed us that day, 
Brett, if you have a look at the game again, Ricky Stewart's kicking game. Yeah, unbelievable. Kept the ball in play, but, mate, we were running up and back and up and back and up and back. See, they were that tough to play against because of Ricky and and Mal and and, Mm. and Laurie Daly. We'd be playing in the middle of the ruck trying, righto, come on. You know, let's let's have a contest. But, mate, we played all day. Mate, they'd shift the ball 30 metres both sides. Then Ricky would kick it down further. We'd turn around back, chase, here we go, up again. Mate, you know... When it's a coach, when it's a coach, and he makes a decision, that's mm. that's final for me. That's the way. I, that's the way I think. Of course, yeah. I'm dirty. Yeah, mate. Please, I would have loved to have been mm. out there. He's never said anything to me. Never. And I've never said anything to him. Yeah. That's a fair point. That's fair. That's a fair. Yeah, how um, how hard was it to bounce back the following year? Because it, it must have been a gut wrencher, you know. And oh, like you shocking. said, there's a group of you guys all around the same age coming to the end of your career and. Mate, I, I remember with Melbourne, I'm lucky I got one at them, but you sort of start thinking, I don't know if I'm going to get back I don't know here. if I'm going to get back there. You know, what about the blokes who play like a grand final when they're set? No, Timmy Brasher, there yeah. there's a perfect example. He plays he 89. plays in the grand final in 89 at 17. He probably thinks, mate, there's going to be another 10 of these. Never, Never plays in another one. Never, ever played We're lucky to get the finals again. We've only got the finals once or twice again, That's we? what I'm saying. You know, so, I don't know. We'll, you know... It's, it's how, how was it in the off season? It sucked the life out of you a bit. You Shocking, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And then you know what? What really hurt the most too? Um, a year after that, Warren left, mm. and made his sort of parting words were the lemons being squeezed. Like, mm. oh, like that bloody hurt. Yeah, that that yeah. hurt us blokes. You know, like would you? I don't reckon he. I don't reckon he should have said that. No, yeah. In don't give opinion. up on the shit, you know. Well, yeah. you, well, even if you thought that, don't say it. Don't say it because these blokes have bloody spilled blood for you, mate. He was, mate. Don't get me wrong. He's a genius, great coach, and all that. And I'm good mates with him. But I don't reckon. I don't reckon he should have said something like that because, mate, you know. And, and it's funny, you know, you, the window of opportunity. Like I look at the Canberra Raiders now. I think they'll win. I think they can win the comp yeah. this year. But if they don't win it this year, I reckon the window might have shut. Yeah. They're the sort of blokes, you know. They've got they've those pommies there yep. for three or four years. And they've all been together for a while. They've all been they? together for a, for a while, and you know, maybe maybe if they don't win this year, it might shut on. Well, Warren Ryan leaves, like you just mentioned. Yeah, one person who we never thought would coach the Tigers or coach rugby league, Alan, Alan Jones. Alan Jones. Alan Jones. How, how's that? Is that one extreme to the other? Well, you know what? It was so different. It was so he. Like, he was the most encouraging bloke for... for <laughs> Brad Wock would just give it to you. Yeah, Wock would just give it to you. He, you know, <laughs> Alan, you know, hands and feet, hands and feet. I remember <laughs> I remember we used to train here on, on uh, Friday Arvo because we, we train... We don't still only train twice a week yeah. or three times a week and then, you know, have a captain's run. <laughs> hands like, and feet. Hands and feet. We'll beat the, the ball will beat the player all the time. <laughs> anyway, we train here and about half an hour into the captain's run, I'd say to Brass, let's do it. So yeah. they'd chip over the top, brush... Would catch the ball and score, and Alan would go, "Come in, come in." You don't flog thoroughbreds, go. Yeah. Home. <laughs> Send us home. So you put the chip out at ten <laughs> minutes in the recession. Well done, Brash. Well done. <laughs> we're all we're all on our way home. But um, mate, he uh, mate, he sort of um, he sort of changed everything too, as far as um, being professional. Yep. But it's a bit like. It's a bit like the old fighters, mate. If you if you're an old Bell main bloke and that, you you love this, the old stand yeah. and the you know the not the great facilities, but it's a it's home. It's home, yeah. you know. Once you start sort of changing all that, it sort of becomes a bit I don't know. A bit like the fighters, the great fighters are all blokes that can spit in their gym. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you see the ragged old gyms and. Hundred percent. And you know you start giving them all these new facilities and doing all that sort of stuff. I don't know, but he, maybe maybe tried his hardest. He he bought a lot of uh, a lot of sponsorship here. Yeah. I remember he called me into the sheds one day. Oh, and he made me captain of the Tigers, probably because I was getting <laughs> suspended a bit too much. And he he said, mate, he said, um, I've just signed two players. He said, um, I've just signed Brian Smith, the greatest halfback in any code, wonderful kicker of the ball. I said, oh yeah. He said, I've just signed Darren Clark, fastest white man ever lived, 11.25 <laughs> for the 100. He said, can you see it? Can you imagine it? He said, Brian will kick downfield, Darren will sprint after the ball, and he'll score. I was going, oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably not as easy as that, Al, but anyway, good, you know, good work. Uh, so we go, we, go to, uh, we go to Redfern to play South at Redfern, and I'm thinking, oh, shit, this is going to be good. Brian, Brian was a good player. He's a tough little bugger too, but... He was blonde and good looking, yeah. good style of a bloke. And he was a union boy too. Union boy. And he'd have the ball and put the lacing around the right way and kick down field. Beautiful kick of the ball. 
But in league, you don't have time to do that. And I saw out of the corner of my eye David Boyle coming from <laughs> from nowhere, and oh mate, he just cleaned him up. But to his credit, mate, he got up and kept playing. But he, uh, mate, he, he loved his time in mm. league. And you know, Alan, we all had bloody Ute, well, we all had bloody Utes and bashed up cars mm. and all that sort of stuff. And Benny was the only one with a Honda Prelude <laughs> that the roof had come down. Yeah, uh, Benny's got the uh, now he's got the good. Yeah, he's gone. Kept going, 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 yeah. Well, I mean. Keith Barnes used to say, all the internationals are on the same money, except Benny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's on more. Well, but I, but so Alan, would, Alan would drive in the train and around the back yeah. here in the bloody BMW 7 Series. <laughs> yeah. you know, we go, back wow, then, where's he get that from? <laughs> now, I, I look back at the early 90s and that period is, I think it's one of the greatest periods of rugby league. Just as a kid watching the Tina Turner ad, simply oh, the best. Really how, how was that to play in, the, in that sort mate, of Mate, it was unreal. Mate, yeah. it was... Uh, Mate, how they ever got a super... Like, she was a world superstar yeah. then. How they ever got... How they ever did that? you were in the ad, weren't you? I was, yeah. 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 She was a world superstar. Mate, we were all starstruck. She yeah. was there, buddy, hanging around while all the boys were doing whatever they were doing for yeah. the, the TV commercial. But, mate, they were great days. Mate, that, Ken Arthurson and John Quayle, mate, they ran the game beautifully, yeah. I thought. You know, I thought, you know, they, they did a lot of innovative things and they, they brought the game into the next century yeah. and all that sort of stuff. And, you know... Um, the Tuna Turner was great to be a part of it. Yeah. Now it's it's a different game. Obviously, the players n- now, no doubt, they're aggressive and and tough. But like I mentioned, it's a different sort of toughness and aggression you guys had to play with. You know, like I'm always fascinated how hard it was. Like you're expected to play like the devil on the weekend, but then be an angel during the week, and it just doesn't doesn't mix. Doesn't work. Now, yeah. you know, and, and like I said, it's a different sort of ruthless tough that you had you know, different sort of toughness different sort of violence different sort of contact back in the 80s and early 90s how hard was that then to control you know you look at I look at the situation the one of the greats with Eddie Ward when you get your sin bin it's one of the great but how hard is it then to to control your temper or you walk that fall line because if you're not showing you're aggressive or you're digging your heels in you just get bullied no, as no, a player you no, know what I mean no. or your opposition goes well we know this bloke's not going to He's just turned water, turned to water. So how hard was that? I quickly learnt. Um, I had a stink on the goal case with a bloke. Yeah. When I was when I was at Channel Nine, and I just finished playing, and I didn't start it, but I finished mm. it. And, yeah. But it wasn't. I didn't, uh, mate. I got to tell you, mate. I, I didn't start it. Yeah. Anyway, mate. I got in all sorts. I got mm. the flick from Channel Nine, and all these other things happened to me, and all that. And when I was when I was talking about it, I so I, I couldn't understand it because. You taught me to be like yeah. that. Don't the game it, taught you to do don't, that. Don't let anyone get over the top no. of you. Don't you ever back, you know, don't you ever take a backward step, blah, blah, blah. And then you, you have a stink in the street and everyone goes, mate, what's wrong with that bloke? Yeah. He's, something wrong with that bloke. You know, he's crazy. Bonkers, yeah. But, but, I mean, that's, you know, not, I, it took me a long, long while to... Well, that's what to, you were taught. Never yeah. take a backward step. Stand up for your mate. Stand up for, your, for whatever you think's yeah. right and all that sort of stuff. But... Um, it took me a long while to, to understand that, that you, you actually taught me to be yeah. like this. And now you turn, yeah. now you turn on me. Yeah. yeah, we talked to Test Footy, and, and again, it's, you know, it's, it's an amazing record with, with an amazing amount of perform, uh, appearances for Test Footy, and you, you debut in 85, so, you know, like we said, you debuted in 82 for, Anna, in, uh, sorry, for first grade. 84, you're an Australian, a New South Wales player, 85, you're an Australian player. So you, you hit the ground running in your career, and... You know, I, I really want to focus in on it's a marvellous kangaroo uh, career, marvellous Australian career. But I want to focus on two kangaroo tours. Now, these are two tours when they were the old tours, 86 and 90, that you went on. Yeah. I, I don't remember as much about 86, but I certainly do about uh, in the tour of 90. I was nine, ten years old, and I, I remember that's when you'd get up at three in the morning and watch the tests. Same and as you, I did when you're I was away a kid. F- you're away for like three months or whatever you're yeah. away for. And then we'll start... It's, you know, obviously there's great kangaroo teams or kangaroo touring parties, but for me, these are two are obviously the greatest of all time. Now, 86 is the Invincibles. You don't, you don't lose a game. Tell us about that tour and uh, your memories from it. Well, you know, I remember, um, I remember the Australian back line. The Australian back line was, was Sterling Lewis, Gene Miles, Brett Kenny, Dale Shearer, um, Mick, Mick O'Connor, O'Connor and Gary Jack. Now... Oh, this is this is honest, mate. I, I remember a lot of games that we played on tour. They were the greatest things ever to go on and play against all the pommy sides you used to mm. wake up in the morning to watch and, you know, Leeds and Bradford and all that sort of stuff. I can remember playing in the front row and people kicking the ball back and not even getting over the halfway line and watching one of these guys score. 
Yeah. That's how good they were. Yeah. I remember I remember going to uh I remember going to St Helens where where um where Mal had played. Yep. Mate, he made the team of the century and played there one year. <laughs> so I remember they used to at all the old English grounds they'd pull up around the back of the sheds and we'd get out. Uh, there's five thousand St Helens people singing, there's only one Mal Meninga yeah. as he got off the bus. It was unbelievable. But the the Wigan were the best sides in those days, and yeah. we we played at Central Park, made forty fifty thousand yeah. people in a club Amazing. game. But we'd arrive on a Thursday, and their best team in England try and get us on a Saturday, sure. so we had two days. Yeah. But we we beat them, and just because it's virtually an international side anyway. Wigan, Wigan back then, were, they, yeah, had yeah, that, yeah, they had the, everyone. the Kiwis and yeah, they had everyone. plenty of the English internationals in their side. Yeah, but the back line, mate, um, unbelievable, like Sterling and that, mate. Yeah. That, like, Sterling wasn't the strongest or the fittest or the fastest or whatever, but he could just read numbers and yeah. his passing game and kicking game, short kicking game, unbelievable. If something needed to be done, Wally could just, I don't know, just do it on his own. What was it like to play with Wally, considering uh, you know you had so many great battles against him in Origin? Yeah, uh, unbelievable. He was, uh, he was unbelievable. Mate, you, you wouldn't believe it. I, he, that was through his sick period and that. He didn't, <clears throat> he didn't really talk that much. Yeah. He was sort of a bit of a loner, yeah. and he was the Australian captain. But mate, mate, everyone loved him and respected yeah. him because, as I said, if something needed to be done, it'd be done. Um, and then, and then you had you had Brett Kenny, like, yeah. wow, mate. And then he'd play centre, wouldn't he? They played in centres, played in centres. And then you'd have Gene Miles, bloody popping balls mm. over the top there like that. I remember Gene went and played with Wigan, and Martin O'Fire scored forty five tries in the season or something. <laughs> And they're saying, Martin, games. you know, Martin, what an unbelievable effort, you know, blah, blah, blah. He said, have you seen the bloke getting yeah. me the ball? Because Gina. Gene Miles. Yeah, Gene Miles. So, um, mate, they were, mate, great memories. Mm-hmm. Going through that undefeated, like, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what I really respect, and he's not with us anymore, neither, Donnie Ferner. I love Donnie Ferner yeah, as a coach. Yeah, Donnie Ferner's senior, yeah. He was unbelievable, mate. But he said, you know, look, look. And he this, coached like, in 86. 86. And Bozo coached Bozo's in 90. He coached in 90. Yep. So he, um, so he'd say, look, mate, I'll just make sure you're happy and look after you and all mm. that sort of stuff. And he said, you've got Sterling and Lewis. Mm. They can they, they run the show. They mm. run the game plans and everything. They were mm. unbelievable. But he he knew by having those guys in his team, he didn't – he just yeah. – he'd take a back, back step and just make sure we were all ready. Yeah, and create a good environment. Well, mate, mate, that's what he did. Yeah. And he was – mate, he was a – Mate, a wonderful bloke. And obviously, bloke. sometimes at club level, you've got to be teaching the players. But if you, if the environment's, if it's your good, happy environment, and you're happy in yourself, and and you've got the team's you know getting on well, and yeah, it's it's good in it. I now, remember. Can I tell a story yeah, about Crusher? Crusher Coil. Crusher Coil. Paul Sewan and Crusher Coil, the best two running back rowers I've ever played with. They could bust tackles and do stuff that other blokes can't do. So <laughs> Crusher hated training. So we we were playing <laughs> Halifax this day. And we were a man down. Someone was down and they said, oh, we, we're a man down, we want a winger. We want someone to play. Who wants to play? Crusher said, oh, oh, mate, I'll play on the wing. I don't want to train. I'll play. Mm-hmm. So he plays against Halifax. Anyway, he's playing in this, against this bloke with buck teeth and shoulder pads and all that sort of stuff. Well, little, back then, wingers little, were small mate, little and bloke, fast. Crusher's bloody 17 stone. <laughs> mate, he ran over him, ran through him, <laughs> double back around, run over the top of him, mate, scored three tries in the first <laughs> half. There's a Crusher playing yeah. on the wing. Anyway, they're going off at half time, and Crush is walking off and you know, pretty pretty happy with himself, but always a little bit angry yeah. when he's playing and that. This probably goes, this probably little winger goes, "Hey, Crusher," he said, "Yeah, what do you, what do you want?" He said, "Do you not possess a fucking side step?" <laughs> <laughs> I said, "We well, use it, stop running over the top." Of you. <laughs> right, and that's a, and some of those you spoke about the fans, like some of those grounds. I remember playing it. It might have been 10,000 people there, but it sounded like 30 with the, yeah, the way they... Central Park you're talking about? Yes. Well, yeah. Central Park, Wigan, would, they would average 15,000, 20,000 when I played at Wigan, but, you know, some of the other grounds at Hull and that you'd go to, there wasn't as many people there, but, geez, that'd make some noise. Yeah. Now, talking about a couple of grounds you, you would have played at on those tours, like Old Trafford and Wembley. Wembley. Some of the greatest arenas of, of all time. What, what were they like? Oh, unbelievable. Well, I mean, as we were saying, you know, we were footy purrs and waking up and watching watching the Australian side play in Wembley and watching, you know, the Challenge Cup every year. Oh, mate, the Wembley walk. I didn't know what they were talking yeah. about. The Wembley walk. So we walk out with both sides and together to play the national anthems. It was about two kilometres. Yeah. I'm going, mate, this is a long walk. This, you know, yeah. we get ready to play. But Poms played good that day. Yeah. Was that 1990? 1990. First, first test. First test. I think the penalties are 14-4 or something yeah. like that. The, to the, the Poms. Yeah. No, but anyway, you've still got to get over the top of all that. But the Poms beat us and 
then I think, Brett, I reckon I'm lucky enough to play in the well, the two greatest yeah. games in my mind is the 89 grand final. Yeah. And, and the second, second test. test. Yeah, that. So let me tell you about let me tell you about Ricky Stewart. Well, let, can, can we, before you go sorry, before you talk about the second test, yeah. run, run me through now. Like you said, you've been beat Wembley. So 86 is don't lose a test. First test at Wembley, you just get beaten in 90. Yep. And you've had Sticky and Alfie with the halves. I think Sticky played 5-8 and Alfie played half. That's right. So for this game two, they go to Sticky and Cliffy Lyons. Cliffy Lyons. Now, what yep. was the feeling amongst the team? And then obviously going to talk about it. It was one of Mal's prime, what Sticky did. It was amazing. And the whole game. But run me through the, the preparations that week. Because now you're just staring down the barrel. If you lose, you're going to be the first Ashes team, first touring party. In a long time, in, to, in forty years, yeah, or something. yeah, to lose it. Yeah. So run me through what was there. You know, we're all proud players, but usually think, "Fuck, boys, yeah. we're under the pump." How, how was the preparation? And was was there any nerves from the players? A bit extra, to know that. Well, hang on, we're, we're facing the barrel of if we don't win this one, it's yeah. we're going to be creating history, so to speak, in a bad way. I think I think what got us through was a, was a great rivalry between England and Australia. Mm. You know, thinking back, Bozo was a junior. So you know, calling back all the old times okay. and, you know, what blokes had done for the jumper and all mm. that sort of stuff. So, And Mal, Mal was the captain of that side. He was so calm and collected, you yeah. know, like, uh, I don't know, just, just the way they are now, yeah. you know. They're just, they're just men, but yeah. they're, they're calm about it. Uh, yeah, going into the game, mate, we were under the pump. Like, yeah. everyone kept mentioning, you, you're the first side in 40 years and they're going to go back getting beat. <laughs> so I'll get to the intercept. Ricky throws the yeah. intercept. So it's 10 all, isn't it? And it's 6 10 all. 10 all, uh, Ricky throws the intercept. And most blokes, mate, you're under the pump, the biggest game of your life. That's what I was saying. I reckon I played in the two best games I ever played. Unset. In, not as. Yeah. In was the 89 and the second test at yeah, Old Trafford. Yeah, 100%. So Ricky throws the intercept. They score. It was at Eastwood, I think, the Pommies set Eastwood, yeah. yeah. So they score. And, mate, we're under the pump. Mm. So we're all looking around for leaders and looking around and going... Oh, man, we're under the pump. We're going to be the first side in 40 years. And it all starts getting back at you. So Ricky Stewart, instead of putting his head down and going down, he goes, hey, boys, lift your heads up. I'll get you back in here. I'll get you back into it. Mm. So, so the bloke's under the most pressure, pressure. of ever and the halfback to mm. you know run the game and lead everyone around. And all of a sudden he's going, hey, boys, get your heads up. I'm going to get you back in. And he did. Mm. And that's a try that Mel... Yeah, he set makes up. The break. He make your Mal makes the break, but it was Ricky who had the ball. Dummy. Sorry, and Ricky made dummy went made the break at Mal's. And he was the one that bit. he yeah. was the one that got us back. And I mean, we were cheering on the halfway line. That's yeah. how far ahead they were. It's funny. There's a couple of things. When I spoke to Stick, he said the same. That there's two plays, especially one play never gets mentioned. Laurie Daly's playing left center. I think. Laurie Daly chases Eastwood, so he scores in the corner. That's right. Now, if Laurie Daly doesn't chase him, he scores, he scores under the post. post, and it's sixteen ten, and Nees can only draw. To, you know. Yep. He chases him, no, knowing full will he was never going to stop him. It was one of those Thurston type, ch- you know, like there's no way Laurie was going to run him down. But what Laurie can do is was hurt him to the corner. Yeah. So he chases him all the way and does not give up, knowing at not one point he looked like he was going to tackle him or stop him, but he makes him Scoops. score in the corner. Yeah. So they missed the goal from the sideline, so it's 14-10. That's right. And I remember Sticky talking to Stick about it. because, Mate, I remember this like it was yesterday getting up and watching this at home, like yeah. it, as a kid. I remember like it was yesterday. So that makes it four. He said it was seven minutes left. So he said Tim Sheen used to do a seven minute drill. So for a lot of people, when you're down, when you're playing, you? seven minutes to go, you're down. You think shit. It feels like seven seconds. It does. You know, yeah. but it's a long time. But it's a long time. But it feels like you got to rush, rush, rush. Yeah. And you see it in this game, in the game this day and age. You know, seven minutes. When you look at the clock and see seven minutes, it feels like fuck. We have got no time left. Yeah. So Stick said that Tim Sheen used to do a seven minute drill. And when they did the drill, it's like, shit, this is a long time when long you're doing time the drill at training. So yeah. that helped him think, yeah. well, I'm, I'm not. I'm you know, I've got plenty of time. On, you know, yeah. I don't need... And he said there was another thing he always did. Tim Sheen said never... Because when he's drifted across field, so I'll... I'll uh, a little show he got the go, ball. He drifted across field, dummy, and went... He said when he was drifting across field, E.T. was the right winger. Yeah. And he said he was thinking about kicking, but Tim Sheen's always said, just don't do anything by kicking hope, you know, like just yeah. kick it. I hope E.T. gets it. So he went to kick and threw the dummy and it opened up and... But away he went. Hey Brett, just to show how great these guys are, that's how. But they're thinking about that in a split a second. second. Yeah. So you, you play in my position, you don't <laughs> you don't think like that. Yeah. You know, honestly. Yeah. No, you're just you're just battling away in the middle, doing your best. Yeah. You know. 
I don't know. Do you remember? Do you remember the try that Cliffy Lyon scored? Well, that went through like fifteen sets of hands. It, it went all the way across from left to right. Yeah. Sorry, right to left. Then he come back right, and Et kicked it back in field, and, and Cliffy caught it on the foot. Yeah. That was one of the, that was one of the greatest that tries great of all try. time. That was a great try. And then you then you go into the third test of Dylan Rowe. I think he's in fourteen nil. Fourteen nil. Fourteen nil. Yeah. Ciro, and Ciro, if you ever watch the game, Ciro does a job on Ellery Hanley. Yeah. Every time he gets the ball, he yeah. smashed him. Yeah. You know. Was so it mate, personal, do you think? I think yeah, it was. Yeah. But, I, but, but there, you know, I know he's one of my best mates. But, mate, there's another bloke that's yeah. underrated. They played 22 tests. Oh, right, yeah, oh, yeah. Mate, he was unbelievable. Mate, I, really the first pit when yeah. they, in the origin back in the day. Uh, well, you know what, uh, Gus, I remember Gus talking about, I come in in game two in 2004, and because uh, a few half, I think Noddy was injured and I partnered Freddie anyway. Was that the... The late call up was it? That, there was two late calls <laughs> up. I come in on the Sunday this one and we played Wednesday. It wasn't the yeah. it wasn't the, the uh, late late, late, late yeah. twelve o'clock night before and I was still pissed. Yeah. It wasn't that. One. But I remember talking in the third game. Um, I was eighteenth man and, and I was talking to Gus and, and he'd gone back to Gaz Mark Gaznier and he had Timo and it's a few of the old hardheads and he said, "Mate, it was like in the early nineties. He said he'd go back to blokes like a Benny and like 92, 93, 93, 94, Benny and Ciro and that the Tigers weren't going as good at club level. Yeah. But they'd done the job in origin, you know, and he picked the blokes like Mary McGregor and done it. these blokes who did the job, you know, and he had those blokes who were – Ciro and that, they were first picked every time. Yeah. And and during that period, early 90s, we went 1-3. Went and isn't it, isn't it funny how, like, Ciro's a real quiet, unassuming yeah. sort of guy. The – like, the, the feeling of being wanted – yeah. Do you understand what I mean? I understand. So the feeling of being wanted was enough for him to yeah. to play well for Gus yeah. in Origin. Well, you, you don't you know someone sticking your neck out for them, or they they got your back. There's no way you want to let them down. You That's know? right. Yeah. Um, mate, who's your, your toughest opponent you played against? Or was there anyone you always had great great battles against? Oh, mate, I, uh, Craig, mate, mate, there was a heap of them. Yep. You know, Craig Young, Pat Jarvis, you know, Les Davidson. Mate, there was all Peter Kelly, yeah. Tunksy, mate, the, mate. As you said a little bit before, in that position, it's uh, it's on every week. You know, one of the toughest blokes I ever played against was a bloke named Herbie Freeman <laughs> that played for West. That sounds made up, though. Mate, mate. he's yeah. tough as nails, Herbie mate. Herbie Freeman. Herbie Freeman, yeah. Well, I, Herbie was his nickname, I think. But mm. mate, he was tough as nails. But he was a Pat Jarvis type, yeah. like built Iron Man, you know. But as you said, mate, and, and I said a little bit earlier, in in that position, if you if you tip your toe in the water, you you know you sort of um, you sort of you're not you're not like yeah. in the game. You, you, you can't sit back and say, "Mate, I'm going to wait for ten minutes yeah. to see what happens." I'll here. ease me way into mate, it. Even you know playing against the Sorensons and mm. all those sort of blokes, Kevin Tamity. Mm. Mate, there was a, there's a hundred of them. Yeah, mate. In 2008, it's a centenary centenary year in rugby league. You named the top 100 players, and that's over 100 years of rugby league. Mate, oh. there's been plenty of players, mate. That must have been. Uh, an absolute huge honour and, and still is a huge honour. It is a huge honour. Brett, I, like, I was like, who, me? You're kidding. What, you, you know, I, I don't know. I've always been like yeah. that. Like, cause yeah, yeah be, you're very be, humble. Because I, because I idolised and look up to so many of these guys, Yeah. I, I, you know, I never thought I was in the same... Yeah. Mate, I'm, mate, I can proudly say now, like I know Ronnie Coote and Bob yeah. McCarthy and, you know, your old mm. man, all, all yeah. those, but I know all those guys from back in the day yeah. And I say to the young blokes now that are playing, mm. I say, do you know, do you know the guys? Half that, have got no idea. Do you know those guys that dug the well here? Mm. Do you actually know who they are? Have you ever mm. taken the time to meet them and yeah. talk to them? You know, one of the greatest blokes I've ever met is Bob McCarthy. Yeah, mate, he's a champion. champion. Mate, he's a yeah. great bloke. But he, but all of them, Ned Kelly, like mm. mate, I bloody, I, I'm not ashamed. I, mate, I had tears when mm. Ned died. Yeah, you know what I mean? What a what a great yeah. Australian, and mate, what a what a tough man, mm. and but. To hear him talk about his family and the way he was with his family and all that is, mate, is a, is the perfect yeah. bloke for me, you know. Yeah. Now you talk about your, your post career. You talk about commentating. Now, block. We become great mates from working together on Fox. we obviously, um, we spent some time in you know when Origins, Origin when you were when well, I had to be straight when when you were when uh, I was 18th man and me you and Joey would go for beers and you were assistant coach and we worked together in country a uh, couple of years country Origin teams for years right? good times but obviously we, in the recent times it's, it's commentating now you're at Fox now but I remember Blocker you were like one of the original trailblazers for me because you were the first in that first group with you still like Fatty, Fatty and Rabs in, in right. Channel Nine like that. Which is now thirty years later. You, you, 
You blokes are the trailblazers. You was the first real big Shh, dogs. Don't tell anyone I'm blessed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm blessed. Isn't that? Yeah. Like, and I look back, and I even look back as a kid growing up, the footy show, like, the footy show was fucking huge. It was. Thursday night, especially big. growing up in Newcastle, a mad rugby league area. Yeah. Everyone's watching the footy show. You come on Friday telling stories about, yo, play Petit me on the yeah. Annie ads. And, <laughs> I'm an Annie. <laughs> you're, you're in East Lydia. You know, dressed up as Abba and yeah. Kiss. And you're and in Sheila's. And Sheila's. Like, Actually, was, I started to like that. <laughs> it, 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 was, it was huge. You it know, was that, unreal. It wasn't it? Mate, it was great times. You know, I, I often, I, I asked them how they put that together. Why, why us three? Mm. Why, how, did you, how did you come together? What they did was Sturlo out west and Parramatta and all that, me sort of, Balmain yeah. in the inner city and, and fatty beaches. on the fatty on the northern beach. Really? Pretty smart the way they yeah. did it, yeah. But it, when you look at it, you had the fatty was the class clown, Stella was the brains, and you were the old head tough bastard who it, it just, says it how it is. Yeah, you know? we'll try to, yeah. But um, mate, they were great times. Yeah. I mean, mate, we mate, we pinch ourselves yeah. even now. Like as I said, I said to you early off, Mike and that. If, if anything happened now and I wasn't doing it anymore, I've had a great run, mate. Mm. I've been doing it for a long time. So yeah. and, I, and I enjoy it. Yeah. I, I still. I still do Friday night footy yeah. or whatever and get a buzz yeah. going to the game. So. But what do you think of the game these days? Obviously, you know, one thing I've always loved about you, Blocker, you get the past players and I'm a past player now. They're all back in our day. You'll never like that, you know. No. You, you appreciate the game for what it is. But what do you, what do you like about the game you see now? Oh, mate, I think I said it a little bit earlier, just, just how powerful and how yeah. strong and, um, you know, blokes with engines that can go all day and just the speed of the game and... Yeah. Mate, the greatest thing for me, the, the greatest thing they bought in, and I, I'd never really rated wingers until they bought in that you could fly in the air like a yeah. bloody acrobat and score tries. I reckon that has brought so much to our game. Yeah. You know, even the new six again rule, albeit I would have hated to play in it because then you're playing in the middle and you're bugging mm. and someone goes, gives them six would again. Would have been nothing worse. Oh, mate, and you look up and you've got little bloody Roger the Dodgers yeah. in there and <laughs> all that sort of stuff. But, no, I, mate, I, I admire the blokes. I... You know what? Tell you the honest truth, Brett, I'm a little bit jealous of yeah. it. I'd love to. I would have loved to have been in that professional era yeah. where, you know, like, you know, you're getting the big cash yeah. and you, you know, like we, yeah, you know, we didn't battle, but we, you know, we didn't, we didn't, you know. No, we, yeah. My whole goal was own a place, own a house. Yeah. You know, back but back in the day, Could you could three houses now. No, 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 I'm battling, licking the dates off the calendar. <laughs> but, but you know. Sort of things change and your goals change, but mate, I love the way these guys yeah. play today. Yeah. I, I reckon, um, I reckon it'd be hard to get up every week. Yeah. I, if, if I really look at it, and I'm really honest. Twenty five weeks, I reckon, is a bit too mm. long to be able. See, I reckon if I was if I was if I was involved in a club now and doing, I, I reckon the most money that I would spend apart from buying my players and buying the proper players would be recovery. Yeah. Well, it's 30 weeks, isn't it, if you want to go to the big dance? Get the get the recovery mm. right and get blokes up and ready to play for the next week, I reckon, mm. would be the most difficult thing. Mate, is there, what front rowers do you like watching in today's game? What 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 front rowers do you go, geez, I would like playing with, or you think are the one, oh, mate, your I, favourites? I like Papali, but you're not allowed to call him Papali anymore. He's what changed his name to Papalihi after 10 years. <laughs> You've finally got... It's like... Um, Mate, I like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a foot, I'm a front row perv. Papa Lee, he's really come along, hasn't he? Yeah, mate, he's a great player. Yeah. He's a great player. Mate, I like the Saifudi twins. Yep. I like, mate, they remind me a bit of a young um, Petro Sivanasuga. Yep. I said that to him the other day. Have yeah. you ever seen him up close? He's a good kid, yeah. Six foot five. All right, mate, he was They're at monsters. PC's Bucks we had That's there. That's right. Yeah. The wedding They're together, monsters. Yeah, great young kid. Great young kid, yeah. very respectful. I like, I, mate, I like all, I like mm. all those guys. And I, I like the real young ones coming through. I like blokes that have got a bit of bottle about them, you know. Yeah. I like that Hudson Young from, mm. from Canberra. Yeah, he's a tough bastard. I, I like the way he plays. Mm. Tarpany probably is nearly my favourite. He's a Newcastle boy. Yeah. Tarpany, Mate, he's nearly yeah. my favourite player. Yeah. I like uh, I well, like. He doesn't give him. a rat's ass about any Could, and re- play, reputation or anything like that. He loves it. The bigger the play, reputation, the harder he goes at him. Plays in the middle and, mm. mate, plays, uh, plays at, you know, he could play 80 minutes if mm. he wanted him to. But, mate, I, mate, I look up to a lot of them, yeah. mate. I, and as I said, I, I get a bit jealous about how mm. they... Uh, you know, about how they uh, get everything now. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it would be great to play in this mm. era. But I, I just I just wish that, uh, you know, that they, they respect the blokes come before. that come before them uh, and dug the well and exactly. get, get the opportunity to meet them and talk to them. Mm. Now I know you're a young fella pretty well. And uh, in today's life, mate, how's, how's the family? You've got your granddad now. I'm a granddad. How's, Can you believe it? That? You know, you, oh. you come here and we do this, you're looking. You know, I'm 40 this year and it feels like yesterday I was 21, you know. And you're minning around the place. You come here and you would have felt like yesterday you're running out for the 
for the Tigers. For the yeah. Tigers, and now yeah. you're, you're a granddad and your family. Yeah. How, how's, how's that treating you? Yeah, mate, it's great. I, I didn't think um, – you never thought you could love something more than what you, you know, yeah. your wife and your, your kids and all that, but – I don't know, there's something special about a granddaughter. I don't know yeah. whether it's because you can give her back or whatever, but, <laughs> exactly. you know, I don't know, just, you know, you know what really, uh, really gets to me is seeing them sort of go ahead every day, yeah. like you see them do something different yeah. every day, and, you, you know, hopefully, well, not hopefully, I will be, you know, I'll be there, you know, every day just to mm. watch and watch her, what she can do, you know. I must drive, must drive her, my daughter-in-law mad, you know. So I sing, I sing to her all the time. Yeah, I'm a girl. <laughs> well, mate, my dad's like it too. My, with my little girl, he's, yeah. so he's his knees are absolutely fucking knackered, but yeah. he's out the back chasing them around. That's so good. Now I've got uh, some fan questions here, here Walker. We've got plenty who wrote in. Uh, here's the first one. Uh, the the Budden Co- Collective sent this. Who's the hardest Kiwi player he's played against, or who's played with or against? I'd say I'd say Kevin Tammany. I'd yep. say Kevin Tammany, closely followed by the Sorensons. Yep. Yeah, they were tough. Uh, this is from Kemo 151. Did big blocker, did, did you get any big offers to leave the Tigers or did you ever consider leaving? I did. I got a few offers. I could have went to Canberra after the 89 grand final, believe it really? or not. Yeah. But I never I never went. Um, Keith Barnes was great. Do you know what? I'm pretty sort of loyal, sort of Blake. The Tigers were the first people to ever give me an opportunity. Mm. And if as long as they were going to keep me here, I was going to stay. You know what I mean? Mm. So... I i got a few offers. Mm. I remember um, um, I could have went to Wes. Who's it? The, uh, the builder, the home builder? Yeah, uh, Masterton. Masterton, Masterton, Masterton Home. Yeah. They, they made me a big offer, mm. but I never went. You know, now, now, I've got one here. I've never heard this story. I don't even know if it's true. You can, if you can tell the story, tell it. But if you can't, maybe just tell it if, it's, if this saying's true or not. Tell it says, what's the story behind you coming to help Gordy in a blue having never met him? What a pair. Is, yeah. that, is that true? It is true, mate. Yeah. yeah. We... Um, he, uh, we were at Melbourne Studios, and yeah. someone had someone had come over, and I won't I won't drop any names yeah. or anything. But someone had come over and give him a bit of. Uh, he was talking to his sister, yeah. Gordy, and someone give his sister a bit of a gobful, saying, "What are you talking to, to us?" Yeah. So anyway, Gordy, Gordy knocked this bloke yeah. out, <laughs> and then they they had about I don't know, half a dozen blokes coming over, and I said, "Well, well here we go." I said, "Oh, well, mate, I- you're one out of." <laughs> I'll stick with you, sir. I, I tell you what, there's. So I I've seen some it. combos in my day. I don't think I've seen better than that. Do you know what, but Brett? This is a type of bloke. This is why I I love Gordon. Yeah, Jones. I love Gordon too. Mate. I love him, mate. He's real. So, unfortunately, my younger brother got into a. He was coaching a footy side. Got mm. into a stink and got his eye knocked out. Yeah. And so he's got a false eye now. Yeah. So anyway, we we put on a little bit of a fundraiser for him down in Wollongong mm. to to raise some money for him for all the medical bills yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So we're at the function. It was at West, Western Suburbs in Wollongong, the Red Devils. So we're all down there doing the function and telling yarns and all that. Gordy paid his own way down, right, <clears throat> got up on stage, gave gave them one of his jumpers to auction, yeah. one of his Broncos jumpers to auction, raised a couple of grand for yeah. that or whatever it was, and then told that story. Yeah. He said, the only reason I'm here is... is could, yeah, Blocker. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's a good, mate. And he, yeah, mate, Gordy. Mate, geez, I'll tell you what, he can throw him. Yeah. Right? Well, that comes to the next question here is, do you think you could have been a boxer or is there anyone you played with or against who you think could have done all right in the ring? Uh, I don't know, mate. Always, uh, mate, I was always taught, get in early, mate. Yeah, be first. <laughs> be first. <laughs> be there first. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, mate. I, I, you know, probably, mate... Uh, I remember talking to Johnny Lewis, a good mm. mate of Johnny. Johnny said to me, Johnny said to me one day, Ian Roberts could have been a, a, like a like a world rated boxer yeah. if he wanted to, but he he wasn't sort of that yeah. sort of guy, you know. But mate, you know, Les and all them blokes, they mm. could fight, you know. But he, you know, get in first and ask mm. questions later. That was the motto, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. First, what was it like to play against the brick with eyes, Lazo? Un- unbelievable yeah. player. I mean, he was. Um, you'd, have, you'd have played with Lazo. I played well, with yeah. him in test matches, yeah. and I remember I've got a great. story. Well, I think it's a great story. We, we were on the 1990 Kangaroos, and I, mate, I'd been around for a while, yeah. and mate, I, I thought, you know, I might get dropped after the first test and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, Lazo, uh, they played. Um, they played against Halifax, and he got this cut on his head here, and he got. He got, uh, I think it was 15 stitches inside, and then 15 stitches outside. This is in a club <laughs> game on the. On the uh, uh, on the Wednesday, so Johnny Lewis tapes him up, you know, with the, the boxes yep. and did it all that sort of stuff. So yeah. So anyway, 
I have a meeting with with Bozo, <laughs> and um, I thought it was. I thought he called me in a room to get mm. dropped, and blah blah blah. And he said, "Mate, who do you want? You know, I'm going to drop Martin Beller out of the first mm. test, which is unfortunate. I'm like, you're safe. Mm. I'm going to drop him uh, out of the test." He said, who, um, do you want? "Who do you want?" I said, "Mate, Glenn Lazarus is going to be the best front row that we've ever seen." I said, "Mate, put him in." So Lazo. Unbelievable, mobile, skillful, yep. quick play the ball, tough, but not not an animal. Like nah. he wouldn't he wouldn't, he wouldn't nah. do anything untoward. Yeah. So he gets uh, the headgear on and plays three days later in the test match. And mate, you we were yeah. talking about it earlier. We head you know, butts, they'd be going after it. Just like so a big bullseye on his head. He got his uh, he got his headgear ripped off mm. the first tackle and just threw it and said, "Don't worry about yeah. it." And played and played like you wouldn't believe, mate. Mm. He was. Mate, close to the man of the match. He was unbelievable. Unbelievable. It was unbelievable. It? But, mate, you imagine that, the pain of that yeah. sort of every time you're bloody going in, but he didn't even flinge. He was me roomy too. Yeah. Well, that would have been an experience for a big Lazo. <laughs> big Lazo. <laughs> Welcome to the tour, <laughs> tour life, Lazo. Jesus. Uh, the Tigers, what, what do they need to improve block? The Tigers of 2021. Well, number one, defence. I was talking yeah. about it last week. They've, they've leaked 40 points and everyone says, oh, mate, they played against two yeah. good sides. Going back to Warren Ryan, they dig the sand pit, mate. If you miss three tackles during the week, mate, mm. you're in the pit. We used to call it chicken schnitzel because right. you'd ended up like crumb well, cutlet. Well, you, got, well, you got oh, smashed, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, you'd be yeah. over there and you'd... Mate, you'd just have bark off you yeah. and everything. Go, you know, but it, what it was was... The, and the great thing about Warren, going back to him, was we used to have these like 90 kilo tackle bags. And after every session, you do six sets of six. Yeah. Try and say that fast. Six sets of six. Six sets of six. So... So what, what his idea about that was would be the last thing that you were thinking about before you went home to play the next day, but this is all week, was the last thing that's in your mind when you leave here is, is defence. Yeah. So I reckon they need, they need to get in the sand pit. Yeah. Um, and, mate, defence defense is an attitude thing. Mm. You know, like I, I watch some of the defence on the, on the weekend. There's a lot of arm grabbing going on. Mm. I, you know, I, I don't like to single anyone out, but... Mm. Mate, you're getting paid big money, mate. You need to you need to put your hand up and, yeah. and go out there and do the job. Yeah. Now, the last question on... Oh, Jeremy, keep yeah, going. Go on. No, you're right. Uh, it said, which player in today's game thinks would have suited the 80s the best? Could have slipped into that 80s style of a front row. There's one or uh, multiple ones. Oh, I reckon... Um, Papali... Or Papalihi. Yeah. Papalihi. <laughs> Papalihi would have went well. Yeah. Mate, you know, you know, I reckon would have went really good in back in the day too. Clemmer, yeah. Mate, six foot five. Like I reckon the game might be just getting away from yeah. him a bit now, but he still does his thirty yeah. outs or whatever. And plenty just, of meters. Yeah, plenty of meters. Hard man to put down. Yeah. But I, I often say in the commentary, if this bloke could pass the ball mm. before or through the line, he could be yeah. he could be one of the great. Yeah. But he's just, um, you know, but but he. But you know what it's like, mate. I, I look at packs and I look at... You've got to have a great mix. Yeah. You've got to have a mix in your pack. Yeah. You can't have everyone that's the same. Mm. So I, I reckon he would have been good. Mm. I, I reckon Clemmer and, and Papaliki. Yeah, Papaliki, what a name. Well, you didn't have to change Papaliki like you did Roach. And let me tell you, there's plenty of here, especially on the Wayne Pierce Hill as the rain comes down in the background, like hard able. We're cheering your name, mate. Thanks very much for taking time out. I really appreciate it. Uh, not only as someone you, I looked up to you growing up, but... Since then, we've become good friends. And, and you speak about Gordy. I know with you, since my time and the, some struggles I've had, even um, since I've left Fox, you've always gone out of your way to make sure I'm doing all right. So that's something I'll never forget, mate. So I appreciate that. But uh, I appreciate you taking time out on Censored and sitting having a chat with me, mate. Hey, Finchie, that, that's what blokes do, mate. That's what mates do. Mate, thanks, brother. Thank you, mate.